Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementine, and as always, I am Super Saiyan. But never mind that. In this video, we're gonna do some cutting and drilling and gluing and soldering and winding and winding and winding and winding. Then we'll do some testing, and finally, we'll place this contraption on a couple of different instruments and make a short song. Because, as per viewer suggestion by Lamal Farofa or Lima of Farofa, we'll be making a guitar pickup from an ice pick. But will it have ice pick highs? I will show and explain the entire process in detail. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, stay tuned! Roll that beautiful bean footage. The first thing we're gonna need is an ice pick. I have a few ice picks in the garage in my toolbox. I use them for awls and they're antiques, so I don't really wanna ruin one of those. So we're gonna make one. This is a broomstick that has been cut down to about three and a half or four inches and a big rusty nail. We'll take a coping saw and cut the head off of that nail and then drill a hole in the handle. But what good is an ice pick if it won't stab something? I thought for a minute about what kind of glue do I have that would be good to stick to wood and metal. And if you've ever spilled Odie's PVC glue, you know that stuff is tough. So we'll dab a little bit on there and then shove it in the handle. And now to electrically insulate, a quick dip in the Mod Podge Hobby Glue. Don't worry, this stuff dries uh, clear and waterproof as well as non-conductive. Now that I have been working as a stripper off camera, a wire stripper that is, we need to drill some holes for the lead wires to go through. These are pre-tinned copper core wires from an old television set. I drill the holes at I guess about 37 and a half degree angle. Now I'll fish one through there, and I meant to use the orange wire, but I used the black wire, as the center of the coil is often the positive, as the outside winds being negative will create a faradage around the coil and the pole piece. And now to wrap some 42 gauge polyurethane coated magnet wire, or copper pickup winding wire, around our lead wire. And yes, I know my fingernails are dirty, that's grease. I've been working on an old Honda that I bought broke in to fix it up. I've been known to do that from time to time. So we'll use this big industrial soldering gun to make sure that wire gets on there, burn all that poly off for a supreme connection. Some guy on Facebook asked me to please, please clean my iron, so I did that. This tip is made out of a piece of copper 10-2 house wire. By the way, it lasts a lot longer than the store-bought industrial soldering tips. Now we can pull that wire into the handle and bend over the solder joint away from the pole piece. I wrapped it in tape to hold it and some ye olde cyanoacrylate super glue. We'll hold that wire in there and uh, hold the solder joint down. Now we can chuck the tip of the ice pick into a electric drill and start doing some winding and winding and winding and winding and winding and winding. The reason that this will take five forevers is because a regular pickup has like maybe eight inches of circumference around the bobbin and this is just straight onto a pole piece. So it's just taken like a quarter inch at a time every wind. So after about an hour, I had had enough of it and I just broke the magnet wire and figured uh, if it's not strong enough, I'll run it active or use a boost pedal. But spoiler alert, it ended up working great. I didn't have to do that. After soldering the other wire and fishing it through, I decided I might want to check resistance on this coil to see how weak it really will be or if it actually works at all. This is a strange design and it could have shorted somewhere, but I got about 1.3K or about 13, 1340 ohms and that's a whole lot better than I thought it would be. Now I know I can glue the other wire in as well as the solder joint and I decided to use something new that I've never seen before. I potted this coil with school glue like Elmer's glue. I know it's sticky and it dries hard and clear and is also non-conductive so this should work out pretty good. Okay so now that it's dry and clear I'm gonna hook it up to the amp, temporarily install a 60 millimeter neodymium magnet using a piece of black plastic that comes in the brick of magnets to protect the magnets from breaking each other to keep it from scratching the coils and shorting them out. Now let's grab this little mandolin and see if it works. 
And it does. And it's especially strong toward the pointed end, so I will put that toward the bass strings. And I think for the mandolin, you could mount it just about right here. Excellent. Now I'll go ahead and use a piece of double-sided tape to stick this magnet on for good. That's all fine and dandy, but what about guitar? This thing works great on guitar. really pretty smooth so now let's see if you can use a pickup made from an ice pick to make a legit passable sounding song in a home studio Well guys, that just about does it for this video. And I have to say I was personally very surprised at the outcome of this project. That pickup doesn't just sound all right for one made of an ice pick, it sounds fantastic. Somehow 1.3K was just like the perfect amount of resistance for this design. I have never counted wines on a pickup. Like I say, wind it till your heart says it's done. Listen to the universe, it might tell you something. Well. If you found this educational or entertaining in any way, please like and maybe subscribe. This video was made from a viewer suggestion. If you have a suggestion for a future video, drop it in the comments below. I'm Clementine. You've been watching Heavy Metal ATC. Till next time.